You're surrounded by Disney. You get theme park perks and you're paying cheaper prices? Is staying at a Disney value resort too good to be true? Well, maybe. We've got all the value resort pros and cons coming at you today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today's video is all about those value resorts in Walt Disney World. Now, if you've ever planned a Disney World vacation before, or if you're in the process of planning your first Disney vacay ever, hooray, then you probably already know the big appeal of a Disney value resort. These are gonna be your more affordable Disney-owned room options than what you'll find over at Disney's moderate and deluxe resorts. But don't let that cheaper price tag fool you. There are a ton of other important details that go into choosing one hotel type over the other, which is why we're taking you on a journey through all of Disney World's value resort options to see if this really is the route meant for you, or if you're better off booking someplace else. Either way, this ultimate guide will be invaluable for you, so make sure to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash value resorts after this video for a complete list of everything you need to remember when it comes to booking your stay at any of these value options. Okay, we're gonna start with the obvious, that theming. Get ready for resorts with real character. Just because these hotels are labeled as value doesn't mean the Disney factor is pulled back at all. In fact, you could argue that these hotels are the most Disney themed options you're gonna find on property. There are five value resorts you can choose from in Walt Disney World, and each has a very distinct but very colorful personality. Two value resorts reside on the Skyliner route, and that's Disney's Pop Century Resort and Disney's Art of Animation Resort. Disney's Pop Century is based on the decades, ranging from the 1950s to the 1990s, so it's got this blast from the past vibe, full of bright colors and groovy energy. It's a fun, slightly cheesy concept with larger than life old school items and Disney characters that you can pose with for the gram. Meanwhile, Disney's Art of Animation Resort celebrates the characters, colors, and creativity of Disney's animated films. There are four different sections of this resort, and each section depicts a different Disney and Disney Pixar classic, including The Little Mermaid, Cars, Finding Nemo, and The Lion King. Oftentimes, Disney's Art of Animation is considered a value plus resort for its family suites and higher than normal prices, but we'll crack into that can of worms later on. The other three value resorts are located in the Animal Kingdom area and are all part of the All-Star category. The theming surrounding each of these is gonna be pretty self-explanatory. You've got Disney's All-Star Movies, Disney's All-Star Music, and Disney's All-Star Sports. Each of these All-Star options can be characterized by their, again, larger-than-life icons all over the grounds. At All-Star Movies, you're gonna see headliner characters from well-known Disney classic films like 101 Dalmatians, Toy Story, and Fantasia. At All Star Music, we expect to see giant instruments everywhere you turn, like giant electric guitars and saxophones and drums and maracas and even towering jukeboxes. And at All Star Sports, you can probably guess the types of scaling icons you're going to find here. You've got tennis rackets, football helmets, basketballs, a foosball table that's going to make you feel very small in comparison. There's just lots of sports going on here. But the one common factor among all five value resorts is their bold, colorful, and character-driven atmosphere. These hotels are definitely fan favorites for the kids and make you feel immersed in the Disney scene all vacation long. However, if you're gonna stay in one of these value resorts for a honeymoon or a bachelorette party or just an adults-only getaway, you're not gonna be able to escape the family-friendly factor here. These value resorts are not necessarily romantic or sophisticated, and that doesn't mean you can't still stay at one of these locations for those grown-ups only Disney outings, but if you're looking for a nice dinner or a lounge or just an area in general where a giant Buzz Lightyear or King Triton won't be staring at you the entire time, you're gonna have to travel over to Disney Springs or one of the other moderate or deluxe resorts for a little vacation away from your vacation. Now, people compare the value resorts to the moderates and deluxes all the time, and this next point is one that is often discussed. Can you spend a full day at your hotel? So can you take a resort day away from the parks and have enough to do? Let's say you're planning a day during your trip where you're not going into one of the theme parks and you wanna be sure you're not gonna get bored, right? Well, it depends. Each value resort has a handful of activities, both free and extra cost. Free activities include days at the pools, pool games like trivia and bingo, movies under the stars, playgrounds, jogging trails, and nighttime campfires with s'mores fixins. 
Meanwhile, premium activities include things like the arcades, the afternoon crafts like tie-dyeing and model magic creations when available. Make sure to check your resort's list of daily activities near the main pool or in the lobby for an updated schedule or ask a cast member about what activities are going to be offered that day. They do switch out. And each resort also has its own gift shop where you can pick up some souvenirs, packaged snacks, or last minute essentials that you might have forgotten to pack beforehand. But let's get back to which activity most likely caught your attention the most, the pools. The value resorts do have some really cool themed pools, but they may not be the best option for everybody. On the one hand, you're again gonna be surrounded by color and character and bold decor. Some of the coolest pools are over at Disney's Art of Animation Resort, where you can find the biggest feature pool, not just among the value resorts, but all of Walt Disney World. This is the Big Blue Pool. It's designed to feel like you're swimming alongside Nemo and friends. The buildings surrounding the pool are painted to show different parts of the ocean, like coral and fish and sharks. And what would a value resort be without those huge sculptures? At the Big Blue Pool, you'll meet characters like Crush and Mr. Ray. And even more fishy friends are hanging out over at the splash pad in case your kiddo needs a break from all that swimming. Because the Big Blue Pool is real big, it also gets incredibly busy during the heat of the day. But Art of Animation does have two other themed but smaller leisure pools, the Flip and Fins Pool and the Cozy Cone Pool. I'm not saying these pools are going to be the quietest that you'll find ever, but they're a little more peaceful than the splishing and splashing going on over at the Big Blue Pool. Not to mention the Cozy Cone one has those free orange cone cabanas that are first come first serve. Though the other feature pools may not be labeled as the biggest at the other four value resorts, you'll still have some fun themes going on. Pop Century's Hippy Dippy Pool has flower-shaped water jets that remind me of the crazy daisy sprinkler I used to play in back when I was a kid. All-Star Movie's Fantasia Pool has a Sorcerer Mickey fountain. All-Star Music's Calypso Pool is based after the musical stylings of the Three Caballeros. And All-Star Sports' Surfboard Bay Pool is surrounded by surfboards. I mean, I guess that's pretty cool if you're into Hanging 10. Each of these hotels also has their own leisure pools though, which you can opt to swim at instead. But the big downside when it comes to all these value resort pools is that you're not going to find any big water slides or whirlpool spas of any kind. Water jets? Sure. Splash pads? Poolside bars that serve up minimum drinks like margs and pina coladas and daiquiris? And refreshing non-alcoholic options too? Absolutely. But for the most part, the big appeal of these pools is that you can swim in them, which, hey, may be enough of a selling point for you and your kids. Aside from the pools and various other activities that I just mentioned, there's not a whole lot to do around the value resorts during the day. But if you're staying at Pop Century or Art of Animation, you can take the Skyliner over to one of the other Skyliner resorts like Disney's Riviera, Caribbean Beach, or any of the Epcot area hotels like Boardwalk Inn or Yacht and Beach Club to take part in some of their daily activities or dining opportunities. You just won't be able to use their pools or gyms if you're not staying as a guest there. As far as the all-star resorts are concerned, you don't have the advantage of a Skyliner to help you quick travel to someplace else. And if you're relying on free Disney transportation and free transportation alone, you'll be completely at the mercy of those Disney buses. And here's the big kick in the pants. These buses will not drive you over to another resort. Disney's hotel buses are only meant to transport guests to one of the theme parks, the water parks, or Disney Springs. So in order to travel to another hotel to check out their offerings, you'd have to jump on one of the buses and then transfer to another resort bus once you arrive at the park or shopping district. And that can take some serious time out of your day. That's one thing I do notice when I stay at the all-star resorts is I feel a little bit stuck. I used to feel that way at Art of Animation and Pop Century too, but now that the Skyliner's there, it's really easy to head over to the Boardwalk or to the Riviera, lots of places to explore. But at the All-Stars, you're still feeling a little bit like uh, stir crazy if you don't wanna do that hour plus long bus trip to and from and to another hotel. All right, next it's time to talk about food. Welcome to Food Court Dining Paradise. Every value resort has one singular food court dining option. And once again, this can prove to be a really good thing or a not so good thing. For the most part, all the value resort food courts offer pretty similar options, just in a different themed location. You got Landscape of Flavors at Art of Animation, Everything Pop at Pop Century, World Premiere Food Court at All Star Movies, Intermission Food Court at All Star Music, and End Zone Food Court at All Star Sports. These food courts have several different counters with lots of different food options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For the most part, these are all gonna be pretty basic and include things like cheeseburgers, chicken sandwiches, salads, pizza, pasta, but you'll sometimes find something a tad more adventurous thrown in the mix, like a salmon dinner, a sesame chicken stir fry, or shrimp and grits. 
The food courts also have bakery display cases with cupcakes and goodies galore, one of our absolute favorites being that very unique tie-dye cheesecake that you'll only find at Everything Pop. Not to mention, these food courts also rotate out seasonal, limited-time desserts as well, which sometimes hit it out of the ballpark and other times prove to be more style than substance. At any rate, the options you'll find at these food courts aren't by any means going to blow you away. Like, you're never going to bite into one of these hockey puck burgers and go, wow, 10 out of 10, best burger I've ever had. And if you are saying that, it's because you're famished from walking around the parks all day. Been there, done that. However, the variety does help guarantee that everyone in your family is going to be able to find something they want to eat. And because the selections are pretty typical, these food courts do cater to pickier eaters really well. The Value Resort food courts also stay open later till around 11 p.m. to serve guests who are just coming back from the parks after a long day, who may have forgotten to grab dinner somewhere, or who just weren't feeling all that hungry until now. Not to mention, all the food at these locations is going to be set at those quick service prices, so you don't have to worry about paying an arm and a leg for any particular item. But as far as having value resort options outside these food courts that'll provide you with something a bit nicer and higher quality, maybe a sit down restaurant, no dice. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. But once again, I gotta shout out that Skyliner Lifeline, which can be an absolute game changer for guests staying at Pop Century and Art of Animation. If you're not in the mood for those food court options, you always have the choice to ride over to one of the other Skyliner resorts and hit up their restaurants instead. Or because the Skyliner also has stations for Epcot and Hollywood Studios, you can always opt for one of the restaurants inside the parks as long as you have a valid theme park ticket and park pass for that day. And whether you're staying at a Skyliner Value Resort or one of the All-Star Resorts, you'll always have the option to take a bus over to the Disney Springs area and dine at one of their many, many restaurants too. For more restaurant suggestions, or literally all the restaurants located inside the Disney bubble, you can check out our 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining for recommendations and reviews, detailed descriptions, and so, so many Disney dining tips. Just make sure to use code YouTube to earn some extra savings on your total purchase over at dfbstore.com. Now, maybe you don't really feel like leaving your hotel to go someplace else, but you're so not in the mood for any more food court options. Food delivery services like DoorDash or Grubhub could end up being your BFF. Food delivery services can bring meals from outside the Disney bubble like T-Bell and Mickey D's straight to your hotel. But important note here, these services will not be able to bring your food directly to your room. Once your food arrives, you'll have to pick it up from Bell Services in the lobby. So if you have a room that's pretty far away from the lobby, factor in that walking distance before making your food delivery decision. We'll talk more about room locations later on, so stay tuned. It is time to talk about one of the most important parts of this video, perks and no perks. Okay, we've talked about the bright colors, the characters around every corner, the massive pools, but do all these factors mean that the value resorts can be every bit as good as the resorts you'll end up paying hundreds of dollars more for? Well, it depends on who's asking. For the most part, value resorts will serve that basic hotel experience. They'll give you a place to rest your head, to take a shower, to watch some resort TV. They'll also provide you with complimentary Wi-Fi access, free parking for resort guests, laundry facilities for an extra fee, and daily housekeeping to keep your place looking nice, tidy, and refreshed. And with mouse keeping back in full force, you might even find a hidden Mickey towel on your bed upon your return. And it's those little things, you know. Staying at one of Disney's value resorts will also allow you to use the early theme park entry benefit, which lets you enter into any of the parks on any day, 30 minutes before they open for everyone else, helping you get a head start on your day and get in line for those more popular rides before those queues start to get outrageously long. Now remember, this is the case for all Disney resorts, not just value resorts, but it is a great perk to have. So where's the downside in all of that? Despite the value resort's exteriors, their standard rooms are going to be pretty standard. Some rooms have the basic two queen beds, some like you'll find over at Pop Century or All Star Movies and All Star Music have beds that can fold up into the wall to give you more space, and some even have a single king bed option. But despite a couple of framed Disney pictures on the walls and maybe some under the sea accents when you stay in a Little Mermaid themed standard room over at Art of Animation, the standard value rooms aren't going to be too terribly different from what you're going to find at your typical hotel room outside the Disney bubble. And don't let the term value mislead you because despite being the cheaper options among the Disney park hotels, these rooms can still cost you a pretty penny depending on what time of year you decide to visit. So let's talk about that bad news next. 
It's time to discuss the real meaning behind the term value when it comes to Disney speak. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Disney's value resorts are still very expensive. But let me show you what an average price range looks like for each value resort room style, just so you can see what I mean. When it comes to the cheapest value resort option of them all, Disney's All-Star Sports usually takes the cake. Typically, standard room prices here tend to range around that $150 per night mark. Did you catch that? The cheapest option, which will give you about 260 square feet of space for your family, will still put you back at least $150 per night. During busier seasons, this price point can hike up to $170 to $180 per night, but during non-peak times like weekdays in January or back to school season, this price could drop down to a more reasonable $130 per night. The other two all-star resorts, movies and music, have standard rooms that are just a bit pricier than sports because they've been more recently renovated and have those beds that can fold up into the walls. Prices for these rooms typically range around the $160 mark, but we've seen them go well past the $200 per night pricing during spring break and holiday seasons. If you book a standard room over at Art of Animation or Pop Century, you will have to pay for that Skyliner convenience. The Little Mermaid rooms at Art of Animation consistently reach the $250 to $300 per night range, while Pop Century keeps standard room prices around that $200 to $250 mark. But surprise, standard rooms aren't the only room styles you're going to find in the realm of the value resorts. Both Art of Animation and All Star Music have family suites, which can sleep up to six guests and come with one queen bed, one table or pull down double bed, one double sleeper sofa, a kitchenette area, and two, count them, two bathrooms. Glorious. We tend to be Team All Star Music when it comes to the family suites because this resort offers the cheapest Disney family suite option on property, typically averaging around $360 to $430 per night, but those also include a fairly large refrigerator. When it comes to Art of Animation's family suites, well, this is where the value plus terminology comes into play. Unlike the standard value rooms we've been talking about so far, the family suites at Art of Animation really do have some super cute theming. There are three different suite options you can choose from, the Finding Nemo suite, the Lion King suite, or the Cars suite. But with that combination of Disney decor plus Skyliner access, plus having more room for you and your family to spread out, you're gonna have to pay the big bucks. These Art of Animation suites typically range in price between, brace yourself, $480 to $700 per night, depending on the season and room style you choose. The Finding Nemo suites are the higher end of the price spectrum since they are closer to the lobby and the main pool called preferred rooms. The lesson here, value is a relative term. Technically those suite price ranges are still the same price or less than what you'd pay for a standard room at one of the deluxe resorts, but does that make them a steal of a deal? I don't think so. But before you have time to really let those value resort prices sink in, I just want you to know that all hope for a more affordable stay during your Disney trip is not lost. During certain times of the year, Disney will post seasonal discounts on their special offers, deals, and discounts page, which could help you save on those Disney rooms or vacation packages. Keeping up with discounts, however, can quickly turn into a full-time job if you're not careful. So if you want a little help keeping track of potential savings opportunities, feel free to reach out to our friends at Small World Vacations Travel Agency. These professional, full-time Disney travel agents provide free planning services for your upcoming Disney vacation so you never have to worry about missing out on a great deal. They will literally go find the deal and rebook your vacation with that deal if you want them to. Now I'll link their info down in the description for you just in case you want to get a free quote. And again, using a travel agency is completely free. You never pay a cent for their services. And don't forget, we here at DFB can also help keep you in the loop on all those new savings opportunities. When you drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash value resorts, we'll not only send you a free printable copy of everything we're talking about today, but we'll also automatically sign you up for our free newsletter, which will update you on the Disney 411 each week. And if you don't need our updates anymore, no sweat, you can unsubscribe at any time. Also, don't forget about the Good Neighbor Hotel options out there. Good Neighbor Hotels partner with Disney to provide very similar benefits to what you'll receive while staying at a Disney-owned resort. Many times these Good Neighbor Hotel rooms will have way more space to spread out at a way cheaper price point. We've even found Good Neighbor Hotels that have dropped down to under $100 per night before during non-peak times of the year. Just head to the Walt Disney World Good Neighbors Hotel website to see all the different options that could be available for you to book. 
Now, will these good neighbor hotels give you whimsical Disney characters and Skyliner access and colorful resort pools? No, but could they potentially give you free breakfast and rooms with fireworks views? Sure. It'll just take a little more research on your part to see if switching from a Disney-owned resort over to a good neighbor hotel is the right option for you and your group. Time to talk transportation. Not to sound like a broken record here, but that Skyliner option for Pop Century and Art of Animation is one of the biggest selling points for these resorts. Not sure if you already got that from this video. That easy sky transportation to and from Hollywood Studios and Epcot and the other Skyliner hotels is not only convenient, but it's a ton of fun as long as you're not afraid of heights, that is. The biggest downside to this is the lines. The lines to get on the Skyliner in the morning when everybody's trying to get to the parks and at night when you're leaving the parks. But aside from the Skyliner, Pop Century, Art of Animation, and the All-Star Resorts strictly rely on those Disney buses. For each resort, you'll find only one main bus stop located right outside the lobby, which means you won't have to worry about your bus having to pick up more guests at other stops before heading on to your destination, like you will with almost all of the moderate resorts. That being said, because these hotels hold tons of guests all throughout the year, more on that subject later, these bus stops get packed out, especially at the very beginning of the day. That means you're gonna wanna arrive to the bus stop early and keep an eye on the bus schedules via your My Disney Experience app. Typically, buses arrive about every 20 minutes. Resort buses also become terribly crowded by the end of the park days too, which in my humble opinion, can feel 10 times worse than the early morning crowds because you're tired and you just wanna to get to bed already. Value Resort buses run a bit more frequently toward the end of the night, but that doesn't mean you're gonna be able to board one any faster. It still may be two or three buses before you actually get to a place in line that allows you to board on the next one. Not only that, but once you do get on one of these buses, there's the possibility that, that you're gonna have to stand for the duration of your ride, since these buses pack guests in like sardines to try to get as many folks on board at one time as possible. I'm not trying to exaggerate or anything, but having to stand on a Disney bus for 20 minutes as you make your way back to your hotel after having walked over 20,000 steps in those sweltering hot parks all day has been my absolute breaking point on occasion. Like my family just knows that my Disney magic meter has completely run dry if I'm pushed up against a dozen odd strangers while trying to keep my exhausted legs standing upright. These are the things people don't talk about when they talk about Disney trips, right? This is when booking a rideshare, like a Lyft or Uber or a minivan, which is Disney's own rideshare service operated through the Lyft app, can be well worth the money. Whether you're staying at a deluxe, moderate, or value resort, you have the option to take a rideshare to and from your hotel for an extra cost. And though I do enjoy dragging the Disney buses over the hot coals, I wanna clarify I'm grateful they exist as a free transportation option for all resort guests. Despite the ginormous wait times and crowds, they still manage to get you from place to place safely. And we've made it to the part of the video that I think is super, super fun. These are some weird things you should know about the value resorts. This is some oddly specific value resort advice and info that you may have never heard before because, you know, we're in Disney World every single day and we've stayed at all these hotels a bunch. These value resorts are huge and hold a ton of guests at all times. The biggest resort is Pop Century, which houses 3,000 rooms. Granted, 3,000 rooms means you'll more than likely be able to find a room yourself when you need one, but it also means this value resort, or any of the value resorts for that matter, can get very noisy. These resorts are also super popular for school groups who are visiting for band and cheer competitions. Just keep in mind that these hotel rooms are not soundproof, so if you're placed near a rather rambunctious or excitable group, well, just make sure you have your earplugs and white noise machine handy. And also know that it's great to have a pool view room, but those pools stay busy late into the night and can be very loud. Next tip, if you don't book a room at one of these hotels, you're not gonna be banned from them. Let's say you do decide to go with a good neighbor hotel, but your kid's super disappointed that they don't get to see that Radiator Springs section over at Disney's Art of Animation. Just because you're not staying here doesn't mean you can't visit. Just hop onto a Disney bus or grab a ride on the Skyliner for a quick break away from your Epcot or Hollywood Studios day. You may not be able to swim in the big blue pool, but you can still take pictures with Mater and friends. And note, you also won't be able to drive over and park at a resort you're not a guest in, but you're more than welcome to ride share on over. Another thing to note, certain rooms are better than others. Each value resort is made up of multiple buildings and the building you're placed in could make all the difference as to whether your stay is great or a disaster. The good thing is you can make room requests during the check-in process. 
When they're able to, Disney will aim to accommodate your request. All you'll need to do to let your requests be known is go to the Disney World website under your My Disney Experience account. From there, click on the My Reservations and Tickets tab, select the Update Check-In next to your resort confirmation, and add any requests you might have underneath the More Details link. If there are specific requests you want to make that aren't listed there, you can always call the resort, let them know your confirmation number, and ask them to please link your request with your confirmation number. But which rooms should you be requesting? At Art of Animation, the Finding Nemo Suites may be the priciest value resort rooms out there, but they will put you near the lobby and the big blue pool. The Finding Nemo Suites will also give you the closest access to the Skyliner Station. Now, those you will often have to pay for, they won't be a request, but it's still something you can note. The rooms on the right-hand side of Building 10 in the Lion King section, as well as the rooms on the left-hand side of Building 1 in the Cars section, also tend to be pretty close to the lobby as well. But being close to the lobby and the main resort pool can, like I said, get noisy at times. If you'd rather be stationed far away from all the commotion, Building 8 in the Little Mermaid section is going to put you way far away back in Timbuktu, but hey, you'll still be near a parking lot. At Pop Century, the rooms in the 60s buildings are set up similarly to the Finding Nemo rooms. They'll put you closer to the lobby, the Hippy Dippy Pool, and the Generation Gap Bridge, which will take you over to Art of Animation and houses the Skyliner Station. If you're back in the 90s area, you'll be far, far away from everything except the Leisure Computer Pool, but it is quieter. At All Star Music, the Calypso Building has rooms closest to the lobby area as well as the Calypso Pool, but the Country Fair section is back in the boonies and nice and quiet and still fairly close to the Piano Pool area. At All Star Movies, you've got three potentially good building candidates that'll get you close to the lobby and the Fantasia Pool. That's Toy Story, Fantasia, and the 101 Dalmatians Building. The 101 Dalmatians Building is also close to the Duck Pond Pool, depending on which end of the building you're placed in. Meanwhile, the poor old love bug section of the resort named after the car, not the annoying Floridian pests you see around April and May, keeps pretty far away from everything, but being further away from the pools, the lobby, and the parking lot also means a potentially quieter stay. And at All-Star Sports, the Surf's Up and Touchdown buildings are closer to all the lobby and surfboard bay pool action, but the Home Run Hotel is going to be the furthest away from the lobby area. That being said, it's also the closest to the Grand Slam pool, which could be a more convenient place to swim and a quieter place to swim. Ready to talk about the best value resort? Well, we don't usually make definitive statements on our channel, but there are two value resorts that just stand out above the others. Those are Pop Century and All Star Music. Anyone shocked we didn't pick Art of Animation? We absolutely love the theming there, as well as the Skyliner access and that big blue pool, but this value resort is so much more expensive than the others. Think about it. I can get a full cabin at Disney's Fort Wilderness, complete with a living room, bedroom, full bathroom, private patio, charcoal grill, and full-size kitchen for around $400 to $600 per night, and that's considered a moderate resort. Meanwhile, Pop Century continues to be the cheapest resort option along the Skyliner route. Plus, it has those recently updated rooms with the beds that can fold up in the wall to give you more space when need be. And then there's All Star Music, which has the cheapest family suites of the Disney Resort family. And though they're not going to be totally themed around Lightning McQueen or Timon and Pumbaa, they'll still have cute Disney essences with the same types of amenities and way more space and a bigger fridge than what you're going to find at the family suites at Art of Animation. There is something to be said about All Star Sports being the cheapest Disney Resort of them all, but at what cost? The rooms here haven't been updated yet and the theming is fine, but may not be nearly as exciting for your kids if they're not into the sports ball stuff. And as far as All-Star Movies is concerned, it sits somewhere in the middle. It's not the most expensive, it's not the least. It's also not the worst themed, it's not the best. But it does have that creepy Jack in the Box guy and I don't like the way he's looking at me. So there you have it. There's a lot more that goes into these value resorts than just being the cheapest Disney owned option of the bunch. And there's a lot you need to mull over before committing to that price tag one way or another. Just remember, if you want to take another look at all these value resort factoids, drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash value resorts. And we'll send you over a full list that you can refer back to when you start planning and researching for your own trip. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.